Okay, we are good to move, come down to Malaysia and Borneo. We have two gentlemen. First will be, they'll be coming up together. Let me introduce themselves. Sazli Kamal Basha, the Deputy President of Cruise Tourism Association of Malaysia, and Mr. Alvin Tay, who's the Chairperson of Association of Marine Industry Malaysia, Amim. Both will be presenting on Peninsula Malaysia and Borneo. Alvin, Sazli. Thanks, Vicky. I'm going to let Elvin sit down for a while. You know, he's, uh, he's getting up to that age. <laughs> um, no, I just, uh, I'll, just, I'll just start first. And then uh, after that, uh, you know, he'll, he'll get up uh, to do the second half and just, you know, clean up a bit. Um, okay, so just a bit of an introduction. There are three logos out there. Uh, the first one is Sail Malaysia. Sail Malaysia is just a brand. Uh, you know, we actually run activities around... Malaysia, and uh, we'll get more to that later. The Cruise Marine Tourism Association is a is an association by a handful of uh, people who are uh, involved with cruises in Malaysia, uh, because cruises generally, uh, being visiting yachts, they don't really have a voice in in the country. So we are like the back end of the feedback system between uh, the people who are visiting Malaysia and the government. Yeah, and that's what it is. And AMIM is a, a very established association of marine industries of Malaysia. Uh, they are more of the, you know, the, the higher specs, you know, the commercial and the larger boats, larger vessels. They, they, they get uh, the shipyards and all that. So they, they are more involved with the bigger projects. Yeah, so uh, next slide. Okay, just, just in summary, uh, I'm sure everybody here are very familiar about Malaysia, but just in summary that, uh, you know, we have been a sea trading nation just like everybody else here uh, since hundreds of years ago, right? Uh, but Malaysia is really consists of two main parts, the peninsula and the northern side of Borneo, northern Borneo. And... Administratively, Sabah, Sarawak in the Borneo sectors are semi-autonomous. That means when we look at the, uh, the maritime uh, organization, uh, we treat them like a different country. You know, Every time someone from the peninsula goes into Sabah or Sarawak, you have to check in. Not just boats, but even people. right? I have to check in. I get a 30-day visa when I visit Sabah okay? uh, as a tourist. So, uh, well, the sovereign celebrations of, uh, uh, you know, 31st August is the Merdeka Day where uh, the peninsula was, uh, got their independence from the British. Uh, and 16 September is when Sabah and Sarawak joined. Yeah? Uh, total land mass. All this will be uh, basically given to you um, after this. Oh, there it is. All right, now I can see it. Right, next slide, please. Uh, boating in Malaysia, right? Uh, marine infrastructure, a lot of uh, are av available across Malaysia and Malaysian Borneo. Majority of the marinas and the facilities are actually on the west coast of Peninsula, obviously. Uh, we'll show more about that. 90% of yachts in Malaysia, over 90% are yachts in transit. Okay, So very few uh, are locally owned. So about nine. Oh, at one stage, we count about 95%. So, you know, it's about the 1995. Uh, yours that enter Malaysia has no time restrictions for, and it's ideal for long-term stays. So we don't have a two-year restriction or three years. Um, this, is a, this is a thing that has made uh, the country very, very uh, ideal for cruising yachts to enter. Uh, obviously, our bread and butter are cruising yachts. Yeah. Um, Population estimate right now is about 1,000 yachts currently in Malaysia. Uh, major sailing events, the passage to the east, which is, ha which is happening right now, April to August, Sail Malaysia passage Langkawi in November, December, uh, uh, Raja Muda Selangor International Regatta in November, and the Royal International Langkawi Regatta. There's not much happening uh, other, than the, uh, other than these uh, events in Malaysia. Okay. Marinas and major services frequented by yachts, okay? Um, 
this, this list will be given to you uh, after, well, with this slide anyway. But if you see uh, a lot of the uh, bases are still on the West Coast. The ones in yellow are also uh, places where you can enter that, that they have uh, CIQP. So those are ports of entry. So conveniently, uh, the bases that are frequented are also the ports of entry within Malaysia. Yeah. And um, let's just go into the map. I think it's easier to look at uh, on the map. Next slide. Okay. So as you can see, that um, the, ma the majority of the marinas and service companies are around the Langkawi, Penang, Panko, which we call the Northern Belt. Yeah. And Port Klang, Port Dickson, Malacca, JB, all that. Now, recently, Langkawi has taken a hit in terms of uh, yacht arrivals because of um, some dodgy requirements by the government, especially with the insurance and stuff like that. Yeah, and so there's a lot. There's been a lot of discussion in the back end about uh, you know how to improve these things, uh, but. The net effect is uh, a lot of boats have actually gone to Phuket, yeah, and uh, we want them back, by the way, Phuket. Okay, um, yeah, <laughs> you're not Phuket; they are Phuket. <laughs> uh, let me see. Okay, now new new regulations are on the horizon. There is a lot of talk about uh, new horizons in place, and I think uh, Alvin has uh, some news on that later. Uh, and there will be some announcements happening in Lima, the uh, Langkawi International Maritime Airspace uh, uh, Conference in Lima, in Langkawi next month. Okay. Uh, some of the marinas that are around on that list are also, um, you know, in a state of not so nice. Okay. Uh, a place like Admiral Marina. Um, uh, perhaps in the state of disrepair right now, but uh, last week they just had a new CEO and they've been, you know, there are talks about, you know, upgrading and repairing whatever it is that they have and hopefully by November, Emerald Marina will be back to, you know, what it used to be. Um, SYC, Samudra Yacht Center in Panko is the new uh, boat yacht that's coming up. Um, is it should be operational for cruising yachts by July, and they have capacity for about 400, uh, you know, boats on on uh, on the hard. Um, Sutra Harbour is one of the best marinas I've seen, um, and I think Rick is over there, right? Uh, very well managed, right, Rick? Right. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Complimentary rooms too. <laughs> yeah, and you know, and there's another one interesting one. I'll show you in the map later. Duyong Marina, where you, it was built during the uh, monsoon cup, back in 2005, and a couple of years back they actually built a bridge on the <laughs> on the river, you know, a bridge that can, that can open. Um, so. That uh, that has also been starting to uh, we've also started to see some boats coming through uh, on the northern side in Kuala Terengganu, Duyo Marina. Now, if you're in Singapore, some areas of interest could be uh, you know the Tioman Johor Islands, because uh, Tioman is it is the port of entry, right? And just uh, on the west of Tioman, there's a, uh, south of Tioman, there's a place called Desaru. Desaru, there's a ferry terminal in Desaru where uh, you can actually get uh, fuel bunkering. Okay, that's a new place, and we have a we just uh, printed a book, the uh, Discover Malaysia by Sea. Uh, this book is really a combination of all the cruises that has uh, gone through Malaysia, and you know it's easy for you to do passage planning with a book. Yeah. Now, next slide. Uh, yeah, that's Terengganu, that's the bridge that we were talking about. Uh, of course, uh, you know, a lot of places here in, uh, in this region, you know, the beaches are nice, wildlife, sea life, uh, you know, you can get jungle trekking even in Tioman. 
But one of the things that uh, fascinates me about Malaysia is actually the river systems. Uh, if you go into Borneo, uh, the river system is amazing, okay? Uh, especially a place called Kinabatangan on the eastern side of Sabah. Uh, this, this river system, uh, you know, recently even a super yacht has actually gone into the system. Um, you can go as much as about 50 miles into the system. Yeah, 50 miles into the river system. Yeah, next slide. Okay, uh, Sail Malaysia. Okay, why do we do this? Well, the thing is, you know, what we recognize, Sail Malaysia, is that we are actually part of a bigger picture. You know, uh, initially it was just uh, something that we just did together, you know, uh, in the early days, like with the likes of Prakash and, you know, some of the guys who are here, even Boone, uh, you know, just to get the blood flowing about yachting. But what we realize is, you know, you know, we uh, over time, this is actually a two or three year mental map of cruising around ASEAN. And so what's happened is that this is this is what's happening now, right? Only a handful of boats will join the rally, you know, the passage to the east, passage to Langkawi, but a lot more boats actually do follow the the, the trail. Uh, we can say that, you know, independently, yeah? Um, but what it gives for our country is once we have this, you know, this movement, it does increase domestic, domestic, domestic tourism. Uh, yacht turnover uh, is good for business, encourages yachts to stay longer, of course, and allows for uh, greater social media presence, okay? So there's a lot of pluses involved. Uh, Sail Malaysia is also working with local Langkawi, you know, your registry agents to promote the flag, obviously. And I, th I think the most important is documentation. Because of uh, what we've done, uh, a lot of people have put their remarks on the anchorages and places that we've been to. Okay, next slide. Uh, the passage to the East Rally is actually happening now. Uh, it's good for me because concurrently, the Eastern Rally is happening in Putri Harbour in Johor in two days. Yeah, uh, but it is actually just a, a Discover Malaysia by Sea kind of thing, uh, coast to coast, uh, the whole of Malaysia from Langkawi to Tawau. Uh, passage to Langkawi Rally uh, will be running in November. Uh, this is quite interesting because a lot of the boats uh, from Australia and New Zealand uh, we, we see is that there, there, there is an increase in the numbers of people coming into Southeast Asia right now. Okay, uh, we we are partnered with our friends in Indonesia. A wonderful sail to Indonesia. Uh, last year there was only about 25 boats. This year there's double. There's about 50 boats coming through from Indonesia through the rally. You know, so there there are a lot more coming without the rally as well. Um, and. I, I think we're going to see a, a big turnaround, uh, you know, after COVID in the next couple of years. Yeah. So the largest numbers we had coming out from Indonesia, uh, from Australia to Indonesia was 117. Uh, but that was a long time ago, about 15 years back. So um, I think we should be able to get up to the uh, 80, 90 uh, numbers by in a couple of years. Okay. Yeah, next. Uh, this Langkawi Rally, next. Okay, uh, this could be interesting for, for, you know, for this room. Uh, what we realize is from the participation, there's about, there's over, since we started, we've had about almost 1,400 yachts from 45 nationalities that join us. Uh, only half are coming from Australia and New Zealand, okay? Uh, that means uh, the other half are circumnavigating boats. Uh, most of the boats that come from Australia, New Zealand, tend to go back, or maybe one, you know, and and a lot of the boats actually once they hit the choke point of Langkawi and Phuket, you know, if they decide to give up, then they sell their boats. Okay, but uh, generally, this is what we see: 50% uh, of the boats coming into Malaysia are not from uh, this region. Okay, so. It's taken a while. These guys would have to go around the world 
and to come here, right? And so our job uh, in Sail Malaysia is to basically help them understand the facilities in, in, in this country and encourage them to stay longer, okay? And it's not, it's not difficult. Malaysia is not a, a difficult sell, okay? Uh, once they taste the food and the fuel prices, they are, they, they're here much, much longer. <laughs> okay, next slide. Okay, I'm gonna bring uh, Elvin up, okay? Uh, he's gonna talk a lot more about the technical stuff, he, um, the you know, entry into Malaysia and some of the uh, things that's happening in uh, Eastern Sabah, okay? Elvin. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you to the host that has invited uh, myself and Sasli to basically give an update on what is happening in Malaysia. And uh, I represent uh, the Association of Marine Industry of Malaysia in the capacity of uh, being the chairperson for the uh, recreational boating and uh, yachting industry task force. So, okay. Uh, when it comes to Malaysia in terms of uh, Entry requirement and formalities is basically the same around in Asia, and there's not much of a com uh, complexity in terms of documentation. It's all laid out down there, because the the past in the past decade, the the government of Malaysia has actually embraced the belief that Malaysia is a maritime nation, so. It, the, uh, we got a head start on this in, uh, in terms of the uh, administration and the authorities in their mindset, which is uh, they are welcoming in terms of, uh, they try their very best to facilitate as easy as possible on, on uh, sea entry for all types of vessels in accordance to uh, IMO convention. And the, as Sasli says, uh, has told everyone that uh, because the uh, historical setup of Malaysia has been done in a way that Sabah and Sarawak are different entities, so uh, this is just to reinforce everyone. Just remember to check in and check out when you are travelling in between the region. Uh, apart from that, everything will be fine. This may be an interest for everyone because at, uh, at the height of the uh, world piracy uh, situation where during uh, pre-COVID, there were certain years starting from 2000 to 2017, up to 2018. Uh, Eastern Sabah, which where I'm operating from, as also as a yacht agent, uh, has been since uh, gazetted into a high security zone. And during, during the COVID period, uh, uh, it was a blessing that the authority took, uh, the Malaysian authority took the liberty of uh, actually enhancing all the border control within this uh, area neighboring Philippines. And since then, we, in the past three years, there's zero incident of uh, cross-border criminal incursion into this area. And it's confirmed by the current latest uh, bulletin that is issued by the CAP, which is uh, headed uh, spearhead by Singapore, Singapore in a way, and also under the JWC, uh, the insurance, uh, the insurance uh, underwriting world, uh, this area is removed from the risk perils. Okay, uh, in terms of shipyard facilities uh, and uh, MRO facilities throughout uh, Malaysia that are yacht friendly. Uh, uh, there is a list that I'm going to show. It's, there's about 16 uh, shipyards which are, which are spread around uh, between Peninsula and uh, Borneo. And under, under our association, you can see that there's 64 shipyards in uh, Sarawak and 32 shipyards in terms of uh, Peninsula Malaysia. The current challenges that uh, the ship repair and ship uh, the the ship repair and the MROs uh, industry, which are servicing the yacht, uh, the bigger yachts lah, the large yacht, is that we do not have certain haul out capacity in a way that uh, to cater to the larger yacht. 
for smaller yachts, which are, I would say, conservatively, anything, anything below a thousand ton is easily hauled out. But anything which is between one thousand to three thousand ton, uh, tonnage on gross tonnage, yeah, uh, they are facilities which are which haul out can be done, uh, refit project can be done, but uh, the current stage of the uh, equipment and also the infra has to be has to be revamped and retooled to suit the uh, yachting industry demand. Uh, these are these these are the list of. Uh, Army members uh, shipyard, which are which are yacht friendly, and uh, non army members in uh, throughout Malaysia that we are very familiar with, and has done uh, a lot of cruising yachts, and also uh, in particular, Labuan shipyard has done uh, at least more than twenty uh, uh, since two thousand ten to date. They have done more than uh, twenty three super yacht refit which are averaging sizes between 30 to 75 meters. These are some of the recent photos of uh, activities that has been done in Labuan shipyard. This is, uh, uh, this is the last one that uh, recently that was done. Uh, this is 2023. Promise actually when uh, MY promised that uh, that is Technically, normally based in Hong Kong, came in a last minute manner. They call me up, they say, oh, okay, we need to do a bottom survey. Uh, in a week's time, could you take us up? I say, no problem. I made a phone call to Laban Shipyard Management. They say, okay, just come. We hold them up. Uh, within six weeks, the bottom, the, the special survey uh, and uh, extensive pipe work uh, job was done and it was uh, on time and below budget so they were they were happy in a way uh, that uh, things fall into places and this is uh, what we could uh, what we could demonstrate and uh, cater for uh, what we call firefighting job you know? uh, a lot of people like to come to Malaysia for firefighting job when they have uh, nowhere to go because of schedule because shipyards within this region are normally very busy Especially with commercial activity, which are uh, commercial activity which are related to oil and gas, so your yachting sectors uh, repair in terms of shipyard and uh, facilities in Asia. I can see that there's still a lacking of uh, cross-border cooperation in between uh, countries. Uh, uh, the association of countries which are which are representing shipyard, they should sit down and talk uh, between them, work out their networking. You know. It, if our country doesn't have that capacity, we should refer them to like Singapore. I've referred a few boats to Singapore shipyard. We know that we don't have the capacity, so we send them to the uh, most suitable uh, location that has the capacity. Okay, uh, okay. That's, uh, that's what I have to update in terms of uh, Mala Malaysia side. I'll pass it back again to Sasli. I guess that's it. <laughs> uh, I think one more, one, one more thing that I'd like to uh, point out is uh, when you talk about Sabah and Sarawak, uh, especially, you know, uh, we're seeing a lot of uh, people who are, you know, boat uh, brokers, you know, manufacturers here, service companies. There's a lot of money out there, you know, uh, and they don't know what to do with their money, okay? <laughs> Seriously, I mean, if you talk about... Uh, the Malaysian economy, what drives the Malaysian economy, uh, number one is oil and gas, right? But uh, oil and gas belongs to the government. If you own land and there's oil underneath you, it doesn't belong to you. It belongs to the government. That's the law. But anything you grow, uh, you, you can keep. Uh, in Peninsula, you know, if you talk about agriculture, palm oil, most of the palm oil in the peninsula are with the corporations and government-linked companies. In Borneo, uh, a lot of those guys are, you know, private ownerships. You know, there are a lot of people, private owners, uh, that own palm oil plantations in Borneo. They have, you know, they got big house, big big cars, big wife, everything big, but they don't have boats. 
Okay? They don't have enough facilities. Like I said, Sutra Harbour is one major facility. Uh, it's probably the only major facility in the northern Borneo. Uh, Miri Marina is there. Um, but Miri Marina caters for cruising yachts. Labuan Marina is also for cruising yachts. So if you're thinking about expansion, uh, that is one place that I think you should consider. You know, there's talk about a, mar uh, a marina facility in Kuching, a new one. Um, but there's, like in Malaysia, there's a lot of talk, okay? Uh, but if you guys think that you want to do something or you want to you know, sell something there, uh, that's one area that I think is a, is a real opportunity out there, okay? So um, that's all from us. Any questions? Uh, yeah, we're here. Thank you. Huh? Huh? Okay. Uh, just now, Sasli has also said that uh, there will be some major announcement uh, to be made during uh, the upcoming Lima. Just for a preview, uh, Malaysia is quite unique in a way that uh, we have our own registry, which is specifically catering for yachts, which is the Langkawi International Yacht Registry. And uh, I'm also a representative. Uh, which is uh, appointed by the minister to flag boats. So that particular flag has been sitting around for the past 20 years. Uh, nothing much has been done uh, till 2022, just before the pandemic. And uh, we have now reached to a point where there will be a major revamp on the legislation of this uh, flag state for Langkawi International Yacht Registry, there will, be a, there will be a code that will be announced. The code has been, uh, been done now. It's a comprehensive one uh, to cater to bigger size uh, large yacht requirement to flag under this flag state. Uh, so we'll, uh, we'll let the Malaysian administration to do all the details on launching this. It will be launched during Lima. Uh, personally, I've been told that uh, the Minister of Transport of Malaysia will be launching this uh, new code under this registry. And uh, so stay tuned for the uh, upcoming uh, announcement. Thank you.